Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint in a sketchbook. We're gonna talk about finding inspiration when we're feeling like painting, but we don't have any ideas what to paint and we're gonna have a good time. So I hope you're here for it. I'm starting off sketching in a sketchbook I don't really like very much. This is the Stillman and Burn Nova Toned uh, Beige series sketchbook. Uh, I really want to love this paper, but it just feels a little too thin for me. But anyway, I paid good money for it and I am just determined to use it. But when I paint in this, I usually like what I end up painting. And I think part of it is because I don't feel so precious about it. You know, I'm not worried about ruining it. I'm, I'm just, you know, going to throw whatever at it. And if it turns out great, wonderful. And if it doesn't, well, you know, I'm not going to cry about it, basically. And the subject that I'm doing today is um, from the food paint challenge. Now, this is not a photo that I would have looked at and said, yep, I got to paint it. Sometimes the food paint challenge ones are, but I find a lot of times the photo is just a photo and there's not, it, it doesn't have much of a, a spin on it. It doesn't have much of a um, artistic styling on it. You're just seeing a photo of some things, some food. And then you've got to put the artistic spin on it. And I like that. And I find that if I'm in that kind of mood where I, I want to create, but I just can't decide, I can't decide what, um, to just check out the food paint challenge on Instagram and paint whatever they tell me to paint. Basically, I find taking that choice away can make me more creative, you know, and then I've got to work within those parameters. So if you're finding yourself overwhelmed, give yourself a, give you, take away a choice, basically. And go to a, you know, there's so many challenge, uh, challenge blogs and challenge, um, challenges, I guess you'd say on Instagram and other social media platforms that you could just, you could just do one, just find one and do whatever it is they say, even if it's something that doesn't seem that exciting to you. So when you have a photo that's not that exciting to you, you can make some choices. You can say, okay, I want to make this photo work with my style. So first of all, the colors, I'm kind of feeling over the whole fall thing. I know we're just into November, but I'm just like, I didn't decorate for fall. I was just not feeling it this year. So I'm like, all right, I, I don't like the, the muted colors. I want to boost the colors. So I'm going to put some teal in there because that tealy blue green is really going to make that orange pop. So I did that. And then I thought, okay, I really want a darker shadow. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue and put that in the bottom. And also I set this gouache palette up like uh, a couple months ago and I've hardly used it. You can see some of the gouache is cracking in there. It's fine. It all rewets fine because I put a uh, watercolor blending medium in it. And that really did the trick on this long-term gouache palette. Uh, everything rewet perfectly well. And so like, I kind of want to use that. I feel bad that, that I haven't used them uh, very much and... Yeah, I'm going to get that sketchbook I don't really like very much. <laughs> and I'm going to use some gouache and uh, we're just going to see what happens. We're going to get what we get and we're not going to get upset. Just like our mom has told us, you get what you get and you don't get upset, right? And this is what we're doing today. Um, so I find often that if I have a photo that I'm not really, that it's part of a challenge, I love a challenge. I'm a goal-oriented person. Uh, and I've got something that I'm not totally psyched about. I don't, it's not precious. I'm not worried about messing it up. There's nothing worse than having that beautiful reference photo that you've taken and you're like, oh, nothing I do is gonna be as good as the reference photo. And, and not to knock the reference photo, not at all. I th I'm sure some people would be like, oh, perfect, gourds, love it. Um, but that's not the space I was in right now. That's, I was not in the gourd season of life, if you will. I was in kind of like, I wanna paint something. So I just decided to play with the patterns and the textures. I got rid of one of the gourds because I odd numbers, if it's under five, tend to look better than even numbers. And um, I also thought it would just kind of nestle in together better. And uh, yeah, I, I liked it. I thought it was, I thought it, I thought it worked. I thought it was cute. And I thought it'd be fun to paint. So uh, I guess I should give you some tips on painting with gouache. My first tip would be uh, use a golden tacklon or nylon brush. I find those brushes are stiff enough to push the paint around, but the texture of the bristles are smooth enough that you don't get like weird ridges and it doesn't like lift the, the paint off the paper. I would also say work in thinner to thicker layers because then you, you shouldn't be, it won't lift the gouache up from your first layer. So if you go in with a watery layer over a layer of gouache, it's gonna wanna puddle and lift up what you have underneath. But if you have less water in your brush for every layer, you're gonna be able to layer and it's not gonna disturb what's underneath so much. Um, and these are just regular gouache paints. Obviously they've been sitting and drying out in my palette, re-wet just fine. Um, 
And I have a whole video on how I set that up if you're curious about what colors I went with. Uh, I have more colors than I need to in there, mainly because I had, um, I wanted to put my light fast gouache colors in this palette, but I ended up with a couple versions of, like a couple of the same colors basically. Um, eventually I'll probably just combine them, but I was just kind of seeing what I preferred. That's why I have like three yellows that are very similar together. I think they're all Hansi yellows. Um, but I have a variety of different brands. I have some Da Vinci, which Da Vinci pans really well. I have to say, I was kind of hard on them on my review because they do get a little bit glossy. They're great if you're going to mix down. You can use them kind of in a hybrid way, somewhat watercolory. Um, but as far as a, a true wash, they just didn't quite feel like that to me. But I do have some Da Vinci in this palette, quite a bit actually, because they have nice light fast pigments. So it's like you kind of pick and choose from different brands and then you develop the palette that you want. Like maybe you get a cobalt teal from one brand because it's more affordable or it's got, you know, it's you just like the property of it and you get a um, doxazine violet from another brand because you can maybe only find that pigment in a single pigment in one brand. Uh, we all have different things that we like. We have different colors that we gravitate to. I love to have a yellow ochre and a raw sienna. Those colors are very similar together. Do I need both of them in a palette? No, I don't, but I kind of like having both of them. And since I did have them both, I put them both in this palette. Um, I had a tail end of a tube of M. Graham burnt sienna. So I just emptied it right in one of the corner wells, but I also had a Da Vinci burnt umber. So I want to have the, maybe they're both burnt siennas or both burnt umber. I can't remember. They're both the same color. Um, they're a little bit different. And I was afraid of my M. Graham drying in the tube. So like, I might as well put it right out in this palette. If it's going to dry out, might as well dry out in the palette where I can actually get to it again. Of course, if you do have gouache paint that dries, in your in the tube you can take a pair of sharp scissors you can cut the tube off just be careful not to cut yourself aluminum is sharp um and then just like put it into a well of a palette and wet it down add a little bit of um add a little bit of blending medium or glycerin or a little bit of honey not too much because you can make it glossy uh just a little bit and some water and let it uh let it soften up you can have a, add a little boiling boiling water in there if it's like a ceramic palette and you want to really get it softened up and that, that'll do the trick. It's really, really an easy medium, I think. It's very intuitive, especially if you're coming from, well, I find it's an easy intuitive medium, whether you're coming from oil paints or you're coming from watercolor. It's opaque, um, but you can thin it down and use like watercolor. It's not gonna have those interesting textures that some watercolors will have, and it's not gonna have the transparent luminosity, but if you're working on a, like a toned surface like I am here, or you're working on top of a painting that maybe you weren't that happy with. I've had watercolor paintings that they're just meh. They're just not great. Um, and then I go over them with, with gouache and because I can bring those lighter colors back, I can put some body in the color. Um, it, it saves it and sometimes makes it better than what I originally thought. So I feel like gouache is kind of an essential, well, I wouldn't say essential, but I think it's such a great complement to working with watercolor. I think it's a great medium if you're an oil painter and you just want something that you can paint with quickly, you can do a study with, you don't have to wait for it to dry because it dries so quickly. It's a, it, it behaves so much like oil paint with the fact that you work thin to thick and um, even the look of it, I feel like it has very oil-like qualities and I can go in with a damp brush and I can merge colors together if I need to, just like you could blend with oil paint. So it's really a fantastic medium. I'm glad it's getting more popular. And I think the reason it's getting more popular is because you have a lot more brands that are coming out with more of an artist's gouache, meaning it's made with light fast pigments. It's not just made for reproduction and then you don't care what happens to the original. I think that's really smart. So you do have to be careful when you're purchasing gouache and make sure that the pigments in the gouache are gonna last if that's important to you. I noticed that like Windsor Newton gouache is lovely, but so many of the colors are not light fast because that's not what they were designed to, to do. They're a designer gouache. They're designed to um, create work for reproduction. I have to say photographing my artwork, gouache is the easiest to photograph artwork there is. It usually needs zero fine-tunement, needs zero editing. It just looks great. Even with your cell phone camera, you take a picture, it looks wonderful because there's no glare. It's just designed for that. Um, and as you get into artist gouache, sometimes you do get those glossy properties like in the Da Vinci and I think probably because they're thinking of it what do the artists need first for longevity and then the designer quality is almost an afterthought like having it matte having it opaque having it non-reflective um, and everyone's going to find their favorites 
and for me it's a mix I like a mix I like Holbein gouache an awful lot it's a little bit harder to dry like it dries down a little bit harder and chunkier so you have to be careful about that maybe add a little bit of uh, blending medium or maybe just a drop or two of glycerin just to keep it from drying down rock hard but fresh from the tube probably one of my favorite or my favorite gouache fresh from the tube so you know it depends on how you work uh, there's good jelly gouaches out there. I like the Anagani jelly gouache. There's nothing wrong with the Himi jelly gouache. It's not my favorite, um, but it gets the job done. And if I wasn't using it right next to like the Anagani jelly gouache, I probably wouldn't notice much difference. Um, so don't feel like, oh, I didn't get the right kind. I got to throw mine away and start over. No, use what you have. There's not a huge difference between brands in my opinion. But um, when you're thinking about longevity and maybe setting up a palette that you want to dry down, going with a higher quality gouache does make a difference in that respect. But, you know, just have fun with it. That would be my number one piece of advice. So jelly gouache is fun. It's nice to see all your stuff out in a palette. That's kind of why I set my palette up like this because I like that. Um, but I do like them to dry down just a little bit. The, the jelly gouache can be a little chaos at times. I am going to be reviewing the Art Whale gouache that actually comes with little cut covers for the jelly cups. That'll be coming soon. I haven't tried it yet, but, um, but gouache is fun. I really like it. It's easy to get the results I want and I hope you give it a try and I hope you enjoyed this time lapse. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy crafting.